Hey, this is Toby. Today I will show you how to create this graphical panel here in MQL5. Let's go. Okay, so this is actually the second part on how to create a graphical panel in MQL5. So in the first part here, we created this simple panel on the left. Um, I will link the video up here. And in today's video, we will add some labels to the panel and also a button. And also we are using the time range breakout EA for this example. Um, so if you want to know how to code this expert advisor, this was a little coding series here on our channel. So I will also link the first part up here. Okay, so let's switch to meta editor and we start coding. So this is our graphical panel include file here. And this one here is the time range breakout EA, uh, which we modified to display the panel. So let's go to the include file. And first of all, let's check uh, the input values uh, from the user. So for this, we will create a, a method here in the class. So we go to our class here and under the private method uh, comment, we will just create another uh, function called uh, check inputs. And now we can go down and maybe, yeah, after the on init function, we just write pool, our class name, and then our created function here, check inputs. And in the end of this function, we want to return true. Like this, let's compile. Okay, so let's start with the first input. So if this input here is uh, below or equal to zero, uh, we want to display a message for the user. So we just use the print function here. Uh, let's say panel with is zero um, and we also want to return false in this case. Okay, now we can do this for data inputs too. So we have this input and change and also for the font size, um, so we also change this print statement here. So we just make sure that the user enters um, valid inputs basically. Now the last input here is the text color. Uh, we don't need to check this input here, but these other three, um, we check them here in the check input function. So let's compile and now we can go to the on init function here. And before we create the panel, we um, check the inputs. So now we can just call this function. So and if this returns false, of course, we also want to return false here for the on init function. And if we take a look where we call this on init function from, so this is here from the expert advisor, from the main on init uh, function. Um, here we call panel dot on init. And now here we can also return false. So if we do just here, if this call returns false. We want to return init failed, for example. Okay. So now we can compile. Okay, and that's it for the inputs. So we check them before we create the panel. Okay, so now let's uh, start to add some labels here to our panel, like inputs, magic number, lots, and so on. 
So we go to our class um, here and if we want to use like labels or buttons, um, we need to include the class file. So we can go up to the include section here and we can just write include and then also controls backslash and now for example for the labels uh, label.mqh and later we will also need a button of course so we can also just include the controls backslash button file dot mqh of course button so let's compile okay now we can go down to our class here and we will create another section and we'll just write a comment private variables so now we can just write c label and we name the first label maybe just l for for label and then input and now we do this for all the other labels so we have magic number lot size start time duration and close time so let's just label magic label lots label start label duration and label close so let's take a look here so inputs magic number lots start duration close okay so now we have our variables here for our labels and first of all we can compile and now we can go down to the create um, panel function here so first of all we create a panel here and now before we run it here in this line we will um, add the labels to the panel okay so let's uh, create our input label so we can just use the variable now m underscore l input and now we can create the label dot create and here we need to specify the long chart parameter which is null for the current chart on the string so this text here is just the name of the label so let's just call it l inputs and the sub window zero now the x and y coordinates for this label so if we take a look here on the chart um, later we will add the label to the panel so our x and y always start here in the top left corner and x is to the right and y here uh, to the bottom so let's just start with 20 pixels for x and y maybe 30 pixels and the second x and second y can be one okay now what we need to do is to set the actual text what we see on a panel so dot text and what we want to display here is inputs now we can all also set the color of this label so we will just set it to green here so color lime um, and we can also set the font size font size and here we can use our input panel font size variable okay now we have created this label and now we also need to attach the label to the panel so 
it will move with the panel. So now we can just write this for our current class, this dot add, and here we write our label. So we add this label to our panel. And let's compile. And we also need to go to the um, expert advisor file and click compile. And now we can take a look here. On the left side here, we see now our input label. Okay, maybe we want to move this um, up a little bit. So the X um, coordinate should be a little bit um, higher. So maybe, or the Y coordinate, of course. So maybe we only use 10 here. Let's compile again. Yes, now it's up in the left corner. Perfect. And later, of course, we will also change the background color. But for now, let's create the labels first. Okay, so let's do the magic number label. And this will now be pretty much the same. So we just go to our create panel function here. Okay, so now we can just copy this section here, paste it down here. Now we just need to replace this m underscore L input with M underscore L magic. So with our magic number label, we do this for every line here. And now the name of the label. And also the text we want to display. Um, so we just write magic number. The color, now we will use the input panel text color. And yeah, we also need to change, of course, the position of the label. So X variable is fine here, but the Y um, pixel count, we can, we should increase this maybe to 30. And let's go to the expert advisor, click compile, and let's take a look at our panel. Okay, we cannot see the magic number label, but that's maybe just because we have the color white smoke for our text color here. So if we change this to maybe red, um, click OK. Yeah, now we can see the magic number label here below our inputs label. And now we can do the same step for the other labels here, the lots, start time, duration, close time. Okay, so let's go back to our include file here and let's add the other labels. So let's just copy this again for the lots, start time, duration, and the close label. Um, so here, um, lots, replace all the other lines too, change the name, the name we want to display, the text, uh, just lots, and let's increase this again by 20, so it'd be 50 now. Okay, now we go to the next one here. This would be our start label. Let's change the name. Increase the position here, 70. And start time. Okay, now duration label. Increase the position here to 90. Uh, duration. How did we call it? duration? Yes, that's fine. And now the last one our M underscore close label here. And this will be Y at 110.
Okay, let's go to our expert advisor, compile, and let's see. Now we have all the labels here. So maybe we continue by adding the button down here um, because this is pretty similar to adding a label to the panel. So let's switch back to our include file here. And up here in our class, let's just add a comment here to clarify these are our labels here. And now we also have our buttons section here. And here we just um, write C button. So this variable will be of type button and the name will be M underscore B change color, for example. And we can use this code here or this type C button here because we already included the button class up here. Okay, now let's go down to the create panel function here. And after the last label, we can just copy this, paste, uh, we will add our button. So M underscore B change color, which is our button. We also replace all the other lines here. Now for the create function, we need to specify the position. First of all, let's change this to button change color. Um, so the position 20 for the first X variable is fine. So this is basically the space to the left of the button. And now here we will use 150 for the second X variable, 230. And for the second Y variable, maybe 180. Of course, this will vary a little bit uh, depending on your screen size. So you can just um, start with these numbers and then play around a little bit so it looks nice on your screen. Okay, now let's also change the text here of the button. So this will be change color. Um, now the color, we will just set this to white, the text color. And the button, of course, also has a background color. So we can just write dot uh, color background. And we set this background color to, for example, dark red. And the font size is fine. Um, and then we also add the button to our panel. Okay, let's go to the expert advisor, compile, and let's take a look here. Now we can see we have the button here with the text change color, the dark red background, and the white text color. Of course, this button does not do anything yet, but we will add this in a few seconds. Okay, so next maybe we change the background color of our panel and also the font name, because as you can see here on the right side, with this font name, um, every letter has the same width and it's much easier to align uh, our labels. So let's do this. So we go to our uh, include file here, all the way up. Now we just copy this section, paste, paste it two times here. The first one we rename to include one and let's rename this to include two and this one here to defines or define state means to change default dialog settings. So, and now here in the first include, we want to include um, the defines class. So we just write include controls dot mqh um, like this. Let's compile and see. Yes. And now here we can um, undefine default settings and then define it with new um, ve um, values basically. So we can just write undefine and you can see there are a lot of settings um, like default settings for the panel 
So the first one, control font name. And the second one, we want to undefine this controls uh, dialog color background or color. I think there's another one. Color client background, this one. Okay, so now we have undefined these um, uh, default settings here, and now we can just write hashtag define, and we can use them again here. And now we can set new um, values here. So for the font name, we will go with con solas. I don't know how to spell this. So this font name here, because this has the same width for every letter, of course. And now we can define the color. Of course, you can use any color, but I like to use C apostrophe and make the, the, the values as a hex input, basically. So 20 and then 20 and 20. So these are for red, um, green and blue. And now again, a apostrophe. So this is just a very dark gray, basically. Um, yeah, let's compile. Also, we need to go to the expert advisor, click compile. And let's take a look here at our panel. And we can see we have a new background color and we also have a new font here. Okay, so let's display the actual values here from our expert advisor um, on the panel. So we go all the way up here again. Under the first include section here, we will just include now our expert advisor file because we need to access these uh, input variables here. So we can display them on the panel. So in order to do this, we need to include the expert advisor file. We can do this even before the define include here. So just write include. And now you need to navigate to your expert advisor file. So dot dot to go uh, one up and then experts and my expert advisor file is of course here if we take a look in my YouTube folder here. So experts backslash uh, YouTube and then the name of the expert advisor. So time range EA panel dot M Q5. Okay, so now we want to compile, but we need to go to our expert advisor file and compile always from here now, because we cannot just compile our include file anymore. Okay, but now we should be able to access um, these inputs here. Uh, let's see if we go in our include file down where we create the labels. So first inputs, uh, second magic number. Now we can just at the actual value here for the magic number. So we can just add a string and now we should be able to input, how did we call it here? Input magic number, like this. And now if we compile, we should be able to see the actual input magic number from our expert advisor here. Perfect. And now we can do this for all the other inputs. So here, magic number, um, lots. Uh, start time. How did we call the start time? 
um, range start. The same for the duration here. Um, range duration and for the close label. So close, maybe we also call this close time. Probably range close time or just close time. Let's take a look. Range close. Okay. Now we go to the expert advisor, compile. Um, now we can see all the values, um, all the input values. Now let's align them. So it's easier to read. So we will just add some space here for the lots. Um, also one for the start time and duration and close. So let's just add some space here, some space here. Now we have to test this a few times to get this right. Uh, we can see lot, two for the lots, one for the duration. So here and close time a little bit less. Yeah, now we can see they are all um, lined up here. Okay, maybe it's a little bit hard for you to see, so I will just change the text color now um, back to this white smoke. So now it's better to read here, but we can see we are already pretty close to our final panel. Now the next step would be to add the actual calculated times uh, from our time range breakout EA. So let's switch to the meta editor again. And we will add these uh, calculated times here after our start, duration, and close time. So if you go to our include file here, so here's the start label. Um, so here after the start, we can just let's take a look. Yeah, add one space um, basically here. And now we can add the actual calculated time but we only want to display the time if the time was already calculated from our expert advisor. So we can now use the range dot start time and check if this variable is greater than zero, then we have a calculated start time and we want to display the start time. So then we want just time to string here. And now we just range dot start time and we also only want to display the um, hours and the minutes of this time not the date for example okay and if this is not greater than zero we don't want to display anything so we just add this here at the end okay now we need another oh, we need another bracket here and now let's compile and see. Okay, now we have no time calculated. So if I change this now, 600, for example, to any other number, um, let's see. Now we have a time calculated and we see the actual time um, of the day for the start time. Now let's also do this for the duration, the close time. So we can just copy this here, duration, close. Now here, of course, we need to check for the end time. Um, also here, end time, and here for the close time, close time here. So now let's compile and, okay, now we have a error here. Let's see. Um, okay, we need to add a plus sign here and here. Okay, let's compile. 
And now if we change the values here, of course, this will update um, automatically if we have a new tick, for example, but today is Sunday, so we don't have any ticks um, for the symbol. But if you change the values, we can see the actual calculated time here. And what we also want to do is to update these values once we have calculated a new range. So we will write a little update function. So we go to our include file here, up to our class here, and we will write a public function. So here after the on init, uh, we can just type void and call this function up date like this and now we can go down here after the um, check input function maybe we can create this function um, void our class name and now update and here we just want to update the text here for our labels so we can just copy this line here from the start label, for example, and we go up, paste it here. So we set the text of the start label to the new calculated time. And of course we can also do this for the end time. So duration here and also for the close time. Okay, so that's it for the update function. And now of course we need to call this function. And first of all, let's compile. And we want to call this function, of course, once we have calculated a new range. So we go to our um, time range EA here and we go down into the calculate range um, function. So this is right here, calculate range. So if we calculated a new range, um, after we draw the objects, for example, we can just write a comment here, update panel, and now we can just use our global variable, uh, panel dot update, like this. And this will update the labels here uh, once we have calculated a new range. Okay, let's compile. Nice. Okay. And now, okay. So the last step we want to do is to make this button here functional. Uh, for example, change the background color of the chart. So let's go to our include file here and let's go here to our class. And here after this private variables comment, we will just add a variable of type Boolean M underscore underscore color. So this will just be a flag uh, for the color of the background. And we also go here to our private methods and we add a function called on click um, change color. Like this. And now we can go down to the panel chart event function here. And after we call the chart event, function from the base class, we can check uh, if our button uh, was pressed. So we can do this with a simple if statement. So if the ID equals um, chart event object click and our S parameter here equals the name of the button. So the name of the button is here, this B change color, not the text, it's this um, string here. You can paste it here. And in this case, we just want to call our on click change color function. So, and now let's write the actual function here. So just void the name of the class on click change color. 
And for now, let's just write a simple print statement here. Uh, button pressed. And let's see if the button already displays this message. Uh, we have a arrow here. Yeah, we need to two um, equal signs here. Compile. Now, if we switch to MetaTrader and if we bring up the terminal expert tab here, and if you click on the button, we can see button pressed. So the button is working. Now we just need to change the background color. So we go back to our on click change color function here. And here we can just call chart set integer current chart uh, chart color background and of course the color now we want to set the color to white for example if our flag here um, is true so color white and else we want to set the color I don't know, for example, to this color here. And also we call the chart redraw function. So this should change the color. Um, of course, what we need to do is to change the flag here. So we can just write this line here and this will change the flag to true and back to false again on the next call. So now let's compile and let's see if our button is working. Yes, now we can see the background color is changing and that's basically it for our panel. I will change the values once more here to see the calculated time. So now we can see the inputs here, uh, the calculated times, and we have a button that changes the background color of the chart. Now, of course, you can also use this, for example, a button to close all positions. So you would just go here to the on click um, change color function here, and for example, call the close position function uh, from our expert advisor here. So this will clo close all positions. So if this video was helpful for you, it would be nice if you just leave a like. Um, and if you don't want to miss the next videos where I show you how to calculate dynamic lot size, for example, or add a training stop loss, I have a long video list. Um, you can always subscribe to my channel. And if you have a question about automated trading, about coding in general, you can always write a comment or write me through my website or via Telegram. Okay, so I will see you in one of the next videos. Bye.